pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll. Brent Bassoon. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Sid. Here. Witt. Here. Kleiner. Here. Burr. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. And we have a quorum. Correspondence. We have one correspondence tonight from the Ag and Marketings Department on the Municipal Shelter Inspection Report for Port Jervis. Received and filed. That is all for correspondence. For the good of the city, we have two presentations. Mayor. Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to call up uh, Coach uh, Francis Coach Paco Santiago and Jorge Castillo. Nice. Not putting the gloves on, are you? <laughs> if, if, if you are, you're going right after that old guy right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. <laughs> We have two, uh, two proclamations. Uh, we're very proud of, uh, of Jorge, and um, I think we were briefed by Chris at one of the previous uh, meetings of the success that he's had, but we have a certificate of recognition awarded, uh, the certificate for boxing, and Jorge having won the Metropolitan Championships and the Junior Olympics in the 11-year-old age group, and he was representing the city of Middletown with courage and pride. And he did a fantastic job, and we want to say congratulations for a job well done and show off your championship belt. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. You want to say a few words? Sure. Uh, uh, well, we're going to give you this, and how about showing it to everybody and show it to the camera so people at home can see it? Good job. And I guess behind, I just want to get a quick picture. sure, sure. Behind every uh, great boxer is a great coach, right? Is that what they say? <laughs> yeah. And this is a uh, also a certificate of recognition for uh, Francis Coach Paco Santiago for his dedication to the Middletown Recreation Young Warriors boxer th boxing team for making such a huge positive impact on these children and also representing the city of Middletown with courage and pride. So we want to acknowledge your great work also. Thank you so much. <laughs> And also tonight, um, we have the uh, Middletown Mayor's Youth Council uh, present, and they're an organization formed of youth members from the Middletown area and the surrounding community. And they consist of middle and high school, uh, middle school and high school students interested in creating and implementing positive changes and events to the, uh, for the youth in our communities. And they also have a voice in what is being done in our communities, and they make sure their voice is heard. The Middletown Mayor's Youth Council is just one avenue um, for their voices to be heard. And tonight we have with us uh, Jackson Marcantanio. And Jackson is going to say a few words. And also Andrea Cortez, to, uh, she's a three-year veteran, to present you with a, short, a few short words about what they do as the Middletown Youth Council. And I think, Jackson, you're from Hamptonburg, I believe, and, um, and Andrea, I think, is from Middletown. So come on up. Good evening. Before I begin my address, I would like to thank the Middletown Common Council for allowing me this opportunity to speak at this meeting. I would also like to thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, for allowing me uh, your time. 
It's both an honor and a privilege to be able to speak before the council regarding the opportunities that lie ahead. I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is Jackson Mark Antonio, and I'm a junior attending John S. Burke Catholic High School. I lived in the Orange County area early in my life and, I, and recently moved back from New Jersey. There have been many things that have brought me to join the Middletown Mayoral Youth Council. My interest in local politics, along with the entrepreneurial experience I have gained from working with my family's businesses, are a great fit for the organization. It has been interesting for me to attend the downtown improvement meetings and learn firsthand about the exciting changes that the downtown area is expected to see. I have seen how the city of Middletown can offer great opportunities. My, grand, my great grandfather, Carmen Elia, for example, was a graduate of Middletown High School class of 1931 and after his graduation from the University of Pennsylvania and service as a United States Marine, he returned to his beloved hometown and opened up his dental practice on Orchard Street, serving the community 51 years until his retirement. His success was a testament to the entrepreneurial spirit this city allows. It would be both a personal honor and a satisfying achievement to be able to work with my peers and have a positive impact on the city, which is on the verge of many great things. Overall, my personal interest, as well as my inspiration to follow the footsteps of my relatives, has brought me to join the Middletown Mayoral Youth Council. Now that I'm a part of this organization and have gained useful knowledge on its inner workings, I look forward to sharing my visions for the organization's future. One vision I have is to build a stronger mentoring relationship between the organization and the council here tonight and, um, and those administrative bodies of, of Middletown to bridge the youth with, with experienced local business owners, politicians, and city council members. I look forward to the MYC creating new events that would help foster these working relationships. I believe the perspective and input of the Middletown youth is a huge asset when planning the improved downtown area. Within this group, I predict we have future entrepreneurs, local politicians, and community activists who all have a common goal to see Middletown revitalized and set to become a major destination within the Hudson Valley. I look forward to a positive working relationship between the MYC and the Middletown Common Council. Thank you. Thank you. Jackson was a, um, an active participant at the DRI meetings, and, and um, uh, his comment about uh, getting youth involved, as you know, the skateboard park primarily was designed uh, in conjunction with the uh, certain members of the uh, Mayor's Youth Council, I believe, or skateboard activists in the community, so it, it is working. Um, Andrea? Come on up. It's all yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, Mayor's... Middletown Mayor's Youth Council is a group for the youth in Orange County to be involved in the community. Our growing group typically participates in a variety of community service events in Middletown. It also provides the members with opportunities to gain knowledge and experience with teamwork, advocacy, and creativity. Every third Monday of the month during the school year, we meet in the chambers of City Hall to come up with plans and create ideas. As a member of three years, I can proudly say that I have seen many of these programs established in Middletown through the hardworking members of the Parks and Recreation Center started off as youth ideas. For example, the skate park that, we will, that will be built soon. Mayor's Youth Council has been represented in Albany and presented to several senators, assemblymen, and assemblywomen advocating for the Orange County and Middletown youth. This is just the gist of the successes we've had among setting up many great events and programs for the community. For these reasons, I am so glad to say I'm a part of this group and cannot wait to see what the future brings. As you can see, they're very active and, and they do, um, uh, I know last year, I believe we, we met them up in Albany with the lobby day up in Albany and, and they are lobbying for their interests and, and part of our success on our grant programs is due to the influence and the lobbying and the uh, hard work of, of the Mayor's Youth Council. And I know Chris Brinkerhoff and our Director of Re Recreation uh, and um, uh, Nicole and, and the whole team over there, Ray Lynn, uh, really Kelly, I believe, is uh, with the Middletown, um, uh, Middletown Cares Coalition. They're really doing a great job in organizing. And I want to thank uh, both Jackson and Andrea for making the presentations tonight. Would you like me to do my report now or you want me to do it after? Good enough, thanks. 
Thank you. Uh, for the good of the city, anyone would like to address this council, please step forward. And for the students and for the boxers, if I know it's a school night, you guys can go home. And if we, on behalf of the city of Middletown and the county council, thank you for coming out. Congratulations to everyone. Good evening. My name is Catherine McMenemy, and I live at 19 Willow Place in the city of Middletown. I've been here several times before on other issues. My timing today is incredible because it's very heartwarming to see so many young people involved in so many positive things in this city. Unfortunately, the reason I am here isn't so tender and heartwarming. I'm here because there was a young father on Willow Place playing outside of his home with his four-year-old son when a car drove by slowly with four youths in the car and they took a BB gun and shot this young father. This fellow is the gentlest, calmest, does not get involved with anyone young man and for this to happen on our street I've lived on Willow Place for 45 years we've raised our son there we have children there we have grandchildren there and for this to happen on one of the city streets I'm sure we're not alone unfortunately I think that there's other instances throughout the city that are far more harmful to our children and other residents. What I'm asking for, I think that our residents need to be aware of the fact that this is happening. This is happening in our neighborhood. It could be happening in your neighborhood or your neighborhood. I don't understand what's happened to the youth where this is how to fill a beautiful spring afternoon by riding around in a car, aiming a BB gun at unsuspecting people. It infuriates me, and it in should infuriate all of you, and it should infuriate everybody who lives in this city to think that this is what's happening. And I'm passionate about this, and I just needed to come here and bring it to everyone's attention. This is what's happening. And whatever we can do, all of us together, we live in this community together. We need to be together to find a way to put a stop to this kind of thing. It can't be let to go on. It's BB guns today. Next week, what is it going to be? I implore you, I implore the mayor and the police commissioner and the policemen of, of the city of Middletown Enlist, enlist the people who live here. We don't want to live in a city like this. We won't live in a city like this. Tell us what we can do to help to get things under control. Thank you. Just, just to answer it real quickly, is that 100% I agree with your feelings. Um, in terms of what we can do as a city and what we're striving to do as a city is to revitalize our neighborhood watch. And we do hold a citywide meeting here. There was one here last Tuesday. Uh, there will be one, if, there'll be one in May, there'll be one in June where the mayor will attend. And this is an opportunity for us to start meeting our neighbors, speaking, opening a dialogue with the police, and that's how we're doing it. And you know, we've struggled to have the interest, but. I'm glad you're here and spoke passionately, and I hope that what you said tonight will inspire people to come to these meetings. They, we hold them, uh, we, we don't hold them in the winter, but we do hold them on the second Tuesday of most months of the year, um, and at, at request, we would have them, without a doubt. I'd go back to one every single month um, if we could have people come to the room, and really, we're here, we're ready. I believe the police department is always ready to listen uh, the mayor included, and, and to brainstorm on how we can connect our neighbors to make our community safer, 
to help the police and be their eyes and ears, but I would encourage you to gather your neighbors who were a part of this incident and please come to our meeting in May. We'd love to help you set something up, okay? Thank you. At the meeting also posted on the website, right? On top of that, um, the, the police chief, the mayor, the council, we're going to be doing uh, a, a, a thing called Safe Summer Initiatives, where we're going to target neighborhoods, we're going to go to neighborhoods, we're going to meet with the residents, and we're going to make sure that um, we're out there. The biggest thing is reporting. We don't know where these kids are coming from. We need to report it as fast as we can to the police department. We need to, you know, a lot of people have that problem, I don't want to call the police. We need to report it. We need to know it. We get the plate number. We can almost meet them at their house by the time they get to, to, to the area. Um, Safe Summer Initiatives is through the police department. The police chief will be out there in neighborhoods along with ourselves and the mayor. And um, it's definitely um, a good thing to come out. And we all are together. We all live here. We all raise our kids here. And we definitely don't want to see that happening. Anyone else that would like to address the council? Good evening. My name is Cindy Stevens. My address is 62 Anthony Street in Middletown. And I'm here tonight because I have some concerns about the construction and the development that's going on in, in my neighborhood. My biggest concern is the amount of noise there is from 7 in the morning till sometimes 6 in the evening. I'm sure that we're not going to do a whole lot about that because I know about the noise ordinance, but it's disheartening. Seven days a week this is going on. Besides that, What's happening with the air? The, the, there's dust and fumes and all kinds of things going on. We can't, it's spring. I want to open my windows. I can't open my windows because I don't know what's going on out there. My grandson was at my house the other day. He went out to play with some of the neighborhood kids. Of course, they're curious. He goes over. He comes back with gunk all over his feet. That turns out to be oil. There's oil in the water over there. What kind of contaminants are we dealing with? I, I have no idea. I don't see anybody to talk to. The guys that are working over there don't have much to say. They look at you like you got two heads if you dare to say anything to them, you know. I just want to know what's going on there. I lived there. I've owned that house for 20 years. I don't know what's happening. Nobody's giving us information. I'm getting it from my neighbors. I don't think that's where I should be getting it from. Someone came on my property and staked it. For what? Nobody talked to me. There's a stake on my property with an orange tag on it. What is that for? Who put it there? You know, where do I get my answers from? That's why I'm here. Hoping that somebody's going to give me some answers. Yeah. But you know what, maybe I can just say a couple things before you touch sure. on that. Because I, I basically have the same concerns. You know, I've been here before. I'm at 61 Anthony. Um, I just, I know the city because I was CC'd on a copy of the DEC violation report that was just um, sent out. I know that you guys just got that as well, so I'm sure you haven't had a full opportunity to examine that and um, come up with some plan of action. But I guess to speak to that specifically um, and touch on what Cindy said, you know, that the, um, the air quality, the um, just the general environmental quality of life that that we're having to live through it. This project can be stated it's going to be upwards of six years. So for six years, we have to constantly stay on these people. I think what I am specifically looking for is clarification on who is supposed to be keeping them to the standard. I know the DEC, were, they're out there. They just did an inspection. There are tons of violations. I don't want to say tons. That's really not true. But there's several. Um, and, and they're all valid complaints that my husband and I and other people in the neighborhood have um, specifically expressed since day one. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I know that you guys have met with us. You, you know, But I kind of feel like maybe the ball's being dropped a little bit. And, and, and at this point, I don't even think it affects just the fourth ward any longer. Um, because now you're talking about um, turbid water that's reading, reaching the wetlands the stream you know stormwater issues that now affects the entire city and and I know the DEC you know this is their realm but I believe the city should be aware of and also making an effort to see you know what's going on in the city and you know th this report states that there are um, supposed to be weekly inspections done and that that is not available on site okay fine that's something that needs to be done who's doing that is it an independent engineer appointed to um, to the project at the develop uh, developers expense 
or is this something the city's supposed to be taking care of? And I, I think I just I need clarification on truly who, on a weekly basis, according to this report, it's necessary, is doing that. Who's holding them to the standard? I want to state for the record, I have never had a problem with this development because, quite frankly, it's probably going to raise my property value. You know what I mean? That place, the neighborhood had been, you know, people have been dumping there for years. We've made complaints before about that, so it's being cleaned up. It's being beautified. But in the process, we have to suffer through contamination, you know, dust blowing. They have a water truck there. They're not using it. You know, there's just, there's just been things that we've been complaining about over and over again since the end of January. You know, and, and like I said, I just, I want clarification on who truly is supposed to be there and making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to. So I guess that's really it. Sure. Excuse me. I just wanted to, say, I just wanted to echo a few things. Good evening. Uh, Cindy Williams is just up here. She's my neighbor. And I just want to echo some of the things she already said. But uh, to give an example, uh, last week I come home and I drive in the driveway and there's a survey stick in my yard. I bought my house more than 30 years ago. That's the last time I saw a survey stick there. Nobody bothered to stop by to ask, you know, to come on the property. Nobody bothered to explain a thing. And the dust there, they're not even that close to the road yet. Let me tell you, I'm retired. I'm home most of the time. It is really bad. I see a water truck come in the other uh, last week one day, but I don't see any water coming out of it. I don't know what they use it for. I don't know. But she's right. It's getting bad over there. That's all I have to say. Thank sure. you. As Mrs. Dibble said, we um, we've had several meetings with. Uh, Older woman, our alderman uh, Jean Francois, our commissioner of public works. Um, I've been in contact with the DEC directly, along with uh, Jacob Tuil, and I know our city attorney has been involved on a limited basis also regarding the development of the project. For those of you, I'm sure everybody here knows, but maybe some that are watching at home are not aware, it's a very large site. Um, it's going to be about 150 plus uh, townhomes with about eight residential um, homes. It is part of a settlement that goes back to 2006, a court settlement in which there are about 20 acres of coal ash that are there. The original development was about 600 units, uh, part of the federal lawsuit litigation, or the federal litigation that was resolved by the city, uh, allowed for this proposed development that's going, uh, not proposed development, the development that's undergoing with the city retaining the 20 acres of coal ash that is within the property. That being said, um, there have been several complaints, and we have our building inspector going there daily. We also needed to get the DEC involved in several areas. And um, actually, um, I know it's uncomfortable, and it's um, um, we don't live there, and we would be just as angry as the people who are living there are. The DEC has been down here quite a few times, and the violation that they did receive, and it's dated April 18th, which is today, um, and we did receive, Mr. Gritton brought me a copy just a little while ago, although I did receive notice of it um, earlier in the day. They are subject to fines of $37,500 per day. Hopefully the DEC has been referred to their general counsel's office. The uh, general counsel at the DEC will uh, take the appropriate, what they consider to be the appropriate enforcement action. We are not the enforcers in regards to these violations, but we certainly do have a role to play. Um, I've been assured by our building inspector on the uh, violation reports that he has reviewed the violation, I meant the violation reports, the engineering reports on premise. Apparently they were not available for the DEC today, but they are required to provide them. Um, the, there is a professional engineer, uh, PE on site, hired by the developer to uh, verify that they are in compliance. And those reports, of course, will be reviewed by not only us, but by the DEC to make sure that the PE is, in fact, doing what he's supposed to do. But ultimately, uh, there's two things that we, uh, that we have. One is now that we have the DEC violations, um, they'll be subject to some significant fines. And two, ultimately, uh, we then can then move forward with a stop work order on the site if necessary. And we will. Um, it's, it's been a long process. Um, a lot of the um, uh, complaints that we've received in the past were received after the fact, um, even though we did have video 
uh, it wasn't enough to um, uh, to move forward with some things because you can't really tell by the video whether there was violations of any sort. But when the inspectors did go out, the problem was was uh, cleared up. But um, in regards to people trespassing on your property, we have told um, all the neighbors that have called that is an issue between you and the police department. You need to call the police department. We cannot follow a trespass complaint on behalf of any neighbor that lives there. So if a company is going on your property or doing work on your property or putting things on your property, they need to call the police and file a complaint. We also have a noise ordinance and if they are working and, and we've had it checked by the police department, um, the one, um, I think it was Cindy Stevens mentioned that they're working seven days a week from seven o'clock in the morning or, and I know we've had complaints about earlier uh, startage time. They call the police. They have to. They have to document it. We can't go in after the fact. So um, we are heading towards the um, a possible uh, shutdown of the site. We'll review with the DEC attorney and our attorney um, any further steps. But uh, this was a significant move today by the DEC, and we encourage the neighbors to call the DEC, and we call the DEC also. So um, I, I know it's frustrating to them. But we, we did get action, and, and hopefully uh, the state will follow through with a significant fine to teach the developer a lesson that we're not going to allow this to continue to happen. We all know the end game of the project is going to be very beneficial, um, at least from the looks of the uh, and the amount of the investment, but the people there don't deserve to live on a daily basis with the problems that are there. We'll continue to monitor. We'll continue to send our building inspector there daily. Uh, to check and uh, and possibly uh, I know Jacob has been following up on even on Sundays I know when we did get complaints on Sundays he's been out to the site uh, but we now have an important document in our hands that will move enforcement action against them much more quickly so uh, I, I don't uh, uh, it, it is a sense of reassurance I think to the people in that neighborhood that uh, what they've been saying has now been documented and we'll move forward with enforcement action Going back to the air, dust, the noise, is they supposed to call DPW? They can call DPW during our city hall during regular business hours. Um, but if there are problems um, before city hall opens, uh, for example, if they have equipment there and they're operating at 6 o'clock in the morning, I believe the noise, noise ordinance prohibits that, um, at least call the police station and let the police department document it. Um, their word alone is not going to be enough for us to pursue legal action. They can't call us you know, at noon and say, hey, they started at 6 o'clock this morning. They need to call us when it happens. The police will document it. They will shut it down based on the noise ordinance. They can issue a noise ordinance violation if, um, if they witness it. But, um, but we, we're, we had to build the case. It's incremental. The case has now been presented to the DEC. They've witnessed it. The, uh, the violations here are substantial. And uh, the fines, I believe, are substantial also. And hopefully um, the developer will be uh, penalized significantly in order to um, yeah, teach him a lesson. But you know, we, we, we now have the ability to have additional enforcement. I know I spoke with Cy before the meeting, um, um, and we're um, setting up another meeting with him to go down on the site and to see exactly what is the problem. But they are required to maintain the dust control, and I think that's all something within our purver purview also. But we, uh, uh, we, we will be continue to be on top of it, and I think the result of the, uh, of the DEC coming in with significant fines is a positive thing. Any questions? Johnson? faceted problem but I was caught most by so if I wake up and there's a stake on my lawn do I call DPW DEC police developer if you wake up on and there's a stake on your lawn and you want to and I don't know how it got there if, if, if it's on the corner of your lawn maybe that's the marker for the property line it could be a property line marker yeah so um, I, I don't know what the stick what the stake signified but if there's a stake in your on your lawn and you know it's your lawn and you want to pursue something call the police if the, somebody went on your property without um, without permission you need to contact the police now that marker may be very well the property line marker too right. I don't know 
but uh, I, you know, but that's uh, that would be the agency to start. With. That would be the agency to start with, with someone trespassing on your property. That would not be something we would. Um, uh, we we can't say that someone's trespassing on your property, but you can, and you need to call the police for that. Same thing with the noise. You need to call the police when it's happening. If it's happening at six or before the uh, the official start time, then we need to be we need to hear about it. And if it's too much noise, I think we also need to hear about it. And uh, I'll give you an example. A few weeks ago, um, uh, with a tractor that they had there, or some kind of uh, large piece of equipment uh, with the smoke, we were able to, um, uh, the, the police were called, and they were able to document it and had something, uh, and, a, and a piece of equipment was removed from the site. So, uh, um, you know, when you go into a court case, it's documentation, and we need to document with all resources, not only uh, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, uh, to 4.30, it's a 24-hour process, especially I, I believe the uh, the rules apply differently on Sundays also. So, uh, so there are there are um, the ability for the police department if they think there's a serious violation, even on a Saturday or Sunday, they will call out DPW and make sure that it's addressed immediately. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions? Thank you. Anybody else to to address this council? I'm, I'm curious also, where are we in um, reference to like their finalized plans um, and stormwater drainage and what have you? And where do we stand on the uh, $90,000 they promised the city um, for drainage improvements on the property that was transferred to the city to, uh, you know, to rectify some um, poor drainage issue? I'll let Jacob, when he comes up, answer those questions. Anyone else? Council city officials, good evening. How are you? Uh, uh, one of the things I just want to highlight tonight is the quality of my life, the air quality and dust and odors coming from the, the site. I don't want to keep on calling you because you know I will. <laughs> my my I, I line will. is always open. I'm, I see it happening uh, till presently to today. I, I just beg someone to, to there's got to be something to, to, from what I read, uh, I Googled it, uh, there's supposed to be some... Um, erosion control that should have been implemented so that doesn't happen on any open er, uh, dirt piles and or uh, uh, land that they disturbed and that, that's not done currently to, as of today um, I just want to let you know that I don't want to call you because I can't open my windows that that's all in regards to that um, there is there is another issue but I'll, I'll take that up with the, the mayor at a later time but thank you thank you no thank you Anyone else would like to address the council? <clears throat> Hi. <clears throat> Very early in life, I learned that if you're the smartest one in the room, then you're in the wrong room. That model has to be true here. Why do we, the taxpayers, have to pay for a courthouse building twice? First time was when we when the federal government wasted our money on a courthouse they didn't even use. The second time we, the taxpayer, will be charged is when Middletown buys the unwanted courthouse for an additional low price of two million tax dollars. I also want to point out that since the courthouse is on unwanted by both parties, that I would be able to acquire it for maybe a quarter of a million dollars. But the point is moot because I don't want an unwanted courthouse. And to prove that the hint is if you say that it's wanted, then the price goes up. Uh, the time for wasteful spending and inefficient use of resources and capital are up on November 7th, AKA election day. Taxes, property taxes are too high, but that being said, I think the mayor did a good job. I can't promise you rainbows and sunshine. I can't promise you more than, but I can promise you no more $6,400 two-week goose police contracts when I can go to Park Circle and for $100, I can guarantee that the gooses will be safely removed. Obviously, since Middletown isn't a sanctuary city, it, mean, it might not be possible. But we will be a sanctuary city. 
so that our children shouldn't fear coming home from school to find their mothers being detained in ICE's detention center in Goshen, nor should victims be afraid to call the police to report a crime and be afraid that ICE might pick them up, might pick up the call, or narcos because of some weed in your pocket. Maybe declaring Middletown a sanctuary city will make us a target individually, but united we stand with other communities across New York and America. It makes no political sense for Republicans to cut off funding to Newburgh, New Pulse, Kingston, Middletown, because that would mean that every city would lose funding and that would not play out during election day. As a final note, I want to say that I'm worried with the EPA deregulating that it will have an effect on us all. I was the youngest worker employed at Revere Lead Smelting and Refining Corp. It's by the mall. And um, I signed a non-disclosure agreement, but I can say that they're amazing. And, but I think the union there must be tougher to keep safety a priority. I remember that um, when I worked in air quality control there that the union was considering a strike and I want unions to know that if they sh show up November 9th, then I will have their backs too. No amount of lead is safe, and according to OSHA, all it takes is lead the size of an aspirin pill crushed up and sprinkled over eight hours. But OSHA might be deregulated, so whatever. Keep in mind that children are more vulnerable to that not only because of their small size, but also because of their high metabolism. They just suck up the minerals. Finally, Council President, is there anything in the city bylaws that would allow an individual such as myself and others to show four minute PowerPoints and slides? Because the way my mind works is through data points and math. Channel 20 is going to love it. Uh, let's see. And Mr. President, is it uh, if it is allowed, then I would hope the public also Time is show up, Mr. us President. their ideas. Thank you. Anyone else to like address the council? Good evening, Su Susan Depew. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council, Commissioner Tawil, and members of the community. I stand before you for the seventh year in a row asking the people in Middletown and around Middletown to join us to clean up Middletown. It's a volunteer effort and it becomes a very fun effort. As, as the students of Middletown gather, they are astounded at how much they can accomplish. It makes me sad, but in the end, it makes me very happy that they've accomplished something and that they leave cleaning Middletown with a sense of pride. So I'm asking everybody who is listening and those who are in the audience to find three hours of time, if possible, on Earth Day this Saturday and join those who have done it before and hopefully the, the hundreds that have said that they would come from Middletown High School, from the Mayor's Youth Council, from various groups, um, the two colleges in Middletown, and so forth, um, to join us from 9 a.m. till noon at Festival Square. We will provide each person who comes with a t-shirt that is theirs to keep. Um, we will also give them garbage bags, that they can fill as much litter as they can grab and then place it on a sidewalk for the city to pick up. Um, we'll have grabbers and gloves to make their, their um, picking up the garbage a little bit safer and easier. And at the end, ShopRite has um, generously donated their time and will provide water and a safe and um, probably healthy drink or a healthy food for them. Um, we thank everybody who has participated so far um, in the past, and we really thank the 
the people in our community for donating over $6,000. Without their help, we could not have done this. This is a community effort, and we're asking everybody to join us. You'll leave it with a sense of pride. Thank you very much. And for those of you who saw this today, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the article that was in today's paper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, reports of the department heads, economic development. Good evening, everyone. All I have this evening is on the agenda. Uh, there's a resolution tonight for the mayor to sign all the documents for the submission of the DASNY grant for the Paramount Theater. That's a $100,000 grant that Senator Bonasek secured uh, for us to go towards some restoration work of the theater, mainly focusing on the, the front doors and some interior work. And that's about it that I have for this evening, if you have any questions. Question for Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. DBW Commissioner. Good evening, all. Uh, I'd like to start to uh, follow with uh, Mrs. Depew, what she said about the cleanup and uh, the volunteering work. I mean, she's been tremendous. Uh, all the effort that she's doing for the, for the city, it's absolutely appreciated. And uh, I'm not admitting that the city is not clean, but <laughs> community, uh, it's absolutely clean, our city. But community, I mean, community action in there and for the people to come out together and to try to do something for our city, it's absolutely tremendous. And it's very much appreciated. And I urge everybody to come out and help out and just uh, heed the call from uh, Mrs. Depew uh, because we really need it. We need to get uh, together, not only for the, the cleanup and picking up garbage, for, for many other things in there. Like they say, it takes a village. It's not one or two peers, person, one department, one mayor, one, one council. It's, it's everybody uh, chipping in. Um, another thing, we, just a reminder for our residents, we're doing the water system flushing. And uh, please be careful before you do any laundry, especially with whites, to check your water before you start the laundry machine and make sure that our men are not uh, in the area. If you have any particular questions, uh, you can uh, call our department, 343-3169, and ask where we are flushing and what area could be affected. But we're moving as fast as we can. We have plenty of water. Our drought condition is long gone, and uh, we're working very hard to clean up our water mains so you can have uh, healthier water, Not and water is very healthy, but it has to be flushed uh, annually. Um, also a reminder that uh, spring cleanup and the bulk pickup uh, is going to start next week with the third ward, after that second ward, then first ward, and then the fourth ward. And uh, it's only, again, for single and two-family homes only, not for multiple dwelling or s some other uh, entities or, uh, or um, uh, structure. So it's single or two-family homes, and the ad is on, a, on our website, how many items you can put out. And I'm, I'm requesting now for our residents, if you see any illegal dumping, meaning people coming from outside the city and depositing uh, sofas, chairs, whatever it is in there, in our streets, in front of vacant home or not vacant home or somebody else's home, please report it immediately to the police department. Uh, this is tremendous cause for us to pick up somebody else's junk and garbage. I mean, this is very costly for us, very costly endeavor, but we have to do it to keep our city safe and clean, safe from the fire aspect of, um, of uh, the um, issue here. Um, monitors, TV monitors, electronics, and things like that, we're gonna set up another day for a pickup for these electronics, so please do not put any electronics at the curbside. Uh, also, um, um, as you know, we started doing the, uh, uh, the yard waste pickup as well. That's DPW, and again, please follow the code. Everything has to be inside containers, or has to be neatly wrapped with the string so we can pick it up by hand. And, um, the, uh, and then I wanna talk about Miamisburg very, very briefly in here. Uh, we, do, we do have um, you know, a trained building inspector in there. He's trained with old soil, er soil erosion 
Uh, we've been, he's been through an EPA audit and DEC audit, and uh, he's there at not only this construction site, but all the active construction site in the city uh, almost on a daily basis. And he does report back to me, and there are some issues with this site, obviously, as were uh, noted by the DEC. It's also our responsibility to enforce all these rules and regulations, and that we will. And like the mayor said, we don't look at any violations lightly. We had some issues in previous construction sites, and we really treat, with the, treat, treat them very harshly by shutting down the job. And that cost them an awful lot of money, uh, these contractors, uh, more than a fine, more than anything. This particular site, like the mayor said, we already shut them down once because of that smoke that was coming out of a big machine that they were using for the logging. And... Um, so uh, today, like the mayor uh, said, we received the uh, letter from the DEC. We immediately, myself and the building inspector, happened to be in a seminar today in Rockland County, but we dispatched our deputy commissioner, which is also a PE, and he's very, well, very much experienced and versed with the um, stormwater management and the SWIP Im implementation. And he went over there and he documented some of the things that were mentioned with the DEC. Some of the daily reporting and uh, weekly reporting in there and after the storm reporting by a PE, professional engineer, uh, has been done. I know that because I've been checking on it uh, through the building inspector. I don't know why the reports were not at the site. They are required to be at the site. Make a long story short, this, this letter is, uh, is uh, well, absolutely, we send a very uh, strong uh, um, email to the owner of the project today based on this DEC letter and we have he has until Friday to give us uh, a written response but in the meantime like I said uh, Chris Gross our deputy commissioner who's a professional engineer went down today and made sure some of the issues that were noted and needed immediate attention are being taken care of he'll follow up with them tomorrow as well Regarding the $90,000 contribution and so on and so forth, I believe it is, um, I believe it is uh, subject to, um, uh, it's, it's, it's got to be paid, I believe, before the, uh, uh, before the building permit is issued, and uh, that will be enforced by our, um, our uh, corporation council, and if there are any issues, because it's a legal agreement, and if there are if there are any deficiencies in implementing it, then we will jump on it and we will do what we have to do from our end, from DPW and the building department. Uh, SWIP and erosion control, sediment control, everything has been prepared for this project, has been approved for this project. We have it all in our record. Everything is, all the permits are, uh, are in order. Uh, the actual design plans for the individual units or buildings, that has not been done yet or the landscaping, uh, specific landscaping, that has not been done yet. We explained that in the past, and I'm just repeating what I explained in the past where we are. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do regret having this dust issue in there and hearing about it now, but again, like the mayor said, we need to hear about these issues, not just during a common council meeting, and, and please, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not attacking anybody, I'm just very upset that I find that, I find that about it now that, oh, there's dust, we can't even open our windows. And, and uh, you know, um, we need to know about it when it happens in there. So 8 o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock in the morning, well, whatever, 12 o'clock noon or afternoon, just call us. <coughs> you have access to the aldermen. You have their phone number, their cell phone numbers. And, and I'll be happy to come out myself, and we will shut the job down. We've done it already. We, we want to make sure everybody is happy, everybody is comfortable, everybody's quality of life is not compromised. But we need to know about it when it happened. So, with that, do you have any questions for me? Jacob, going back to the reports, they said the reports weren't on site? The reports were not on site, that's what the DEC said. What kind of reports? Reports, it's a weekly report. The PE, a professional engineer hired by the developer, as required by us, to make sure that all the SWEP which is a storm water pollution prevention plan, all the SWIP um, uh, methods and, and means and methods that are shown on the plans are implemented, such as having saltation basin if needed, whatever was approved in that SWIP, 
report, it must be implemented. All the silt fences up, the silt fences not pushed down after a storm. All these things, he has to do that weekly inspection in there, and it's a standard form. He will go check it, and you know, this is adequate, not adequate, deficient, must correct. He will give a copy to the developer, and he will give a copy to us. And then the DEC, when they come to inspect, they, can, they should have a copy available right there at the site. I personally mentioned that to them at the, before they started the job. I personally checked with our building inspector about this, and he tells me, yes, the weekly report has been produced to us. I don't know the answer because it just happened today. I'm waiting for a written, the mayor and I are waiting for a written correspondence from the uh, developer to tell us why it wasn't there. And if there is, a, like the mayor said, this is an eye opener, it's gonna be for the developer. We, we had, you know, we had experience, bad experience at another development, some, in, some, some place in, um, in High Barney Road. And we butted heads and, and finally in there, developer found out that he has no way but to comply. He complied uh, and now he has no issue. The DEC doesn't go anymore. We're just inspecting it ourselves. And that's what it is. If the PE, like the mayor was saying, if the professional engineer is not doing a good job or a proper job also, the developer will be written up because we hired, the, we, we are going, we, our, con, our contract is with the developer. So our, our building inspectors allowed to see those reports? We have a copy of them. We have to have a copy of them okay. in our files as well. Not only see them, but we have to have a physical copy of them. And I want to make sure that we have all that in there. Again, the letter just came out was emailed to me about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock when I was in a seminar. Immediately we took action, we dispatched our deputy commissioner in there who's a PE, and we started the board rolling. We sent, I sent emails to the developer, strong worded emails in there. We copied the mayor. We're not sitting on it. We don't, we don't take these things lightly. Any questions for Alman John Francois? Commissioner, you mentioned they, they have to notify you by Friday, and when they do, when the developer do notify you, what happened afterward? We got to find out what what uh, what steps they've taken to correct the situation. Okay. Uh, wh whatever it is, they're gonna say this is what we this is the violation number one, number two, number three. This is what we have done to correct it. Okay. Maybe this is not a violation. Uh, the, the reports were there as an example. I don't know. I don't know when, uh, when uh, Mrs. Uh, Brown went down to the field. I mean, I don't know who met her there. I, I, I don't know. No, no, I know when. It said that in the report. I don't know who met her from the developer's uh, uh, developer or his engineer, if they met her or not at the site. The letters did say. The project manager, okay. So I gotta find out all that uh, information. I mean, if they if they screwed up, they'll be they'll be they'll be in trouble. I mean, the mayor said it. I don't know how many times I have to repeat it. But if if the issue is not rectified, what what are your steps that you take afterward? We, well, like I said, we we can from imposing fines okay. to shutting the job down. Okay. And we usually shut the job down because that's the most costly thing. Imagine if you're a developer in there, you have backhoes and excavators and a huge number of men and a deadline to meet to start selling this because you're investing tons of money and the city comes and says, okay, we're shutting you down. We have to have the excuse because one, two, three, four, because that's a huge amount of money for him on a daily basis. All these people that are shut down, they have to get paid. Work is not getting good done, but the people are getting paid. It's, 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 I mean, this is the, as, as strong as you can get without having to drag the matter into court, which we can, and then, you know, said he said, she said, and all that stuff in there. We have the stop work order. That's the most devastating punishment you can implement, in my opinion, on any developer, especially in a large construction site, where the cost is just huge on a daily basis. A huge amount of money is being paid on a daily basis. And when you say, okay, you're done, you can't do any work, you can't move anything, somebody's got to pay them. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Jacob. Oh, this is under the department department heads. We can't we can't allow the park public right now. City treasurer. Good evening. 
uh, we've uh, last week we finished up the uh, uh, extern well the the field version field portion of our annual audit with uh, O'Connor Davies. They they were here for two weeks. Uh, it went smooth, no problem, and we we can expect to report probably in three four weeks. That's all I have. Any questions for Don? Thank you, Don. Recreation Department. Good evening, a couple of really quick things. Uh, one, very proud of our staff and uh, very proud of our, our kids. We have a lot of kids doing a lot of great things and we're gonna focus on some of the kids that are making wrong choices and try to find something positive for them to do, but they have to engage. And we work hard at that every day and it does take a whole team. Police department's been working a lot with us as well. We have a lot of good things coming down the pipe with youth and police relations and youth and uh, community and police relations. So that's some great stuff. Uh, last week was spring break, so there was kids running around everywhere. Uh, we had 116 of them in a camp over at Presidential. Uh, we'd like to thank the school district for letting us use that. Uh, with the high school under construction, they did give us that facility to use, and the high school kids that were counselors were great. We did have the Easter egg hump up at Davidge on Saturday. I'm estimating over 600 people up there. It was huge. A big thank you to the ROTC, the MAC, the Mayor's Youth Council, all the kids that are up there securing the area and hiding over 2,000 eggs. I mean, that's just great stuff. Um, on a note, the Little League Parade is this Sunday. They have made some changes, so we don't go by past practice. They're actually kicking off at 11 o'clock from the Elks Club, and they'll be marching down Watkins Avenue instead of Highland Avenue. So the kickoff is at 11 o'clock, not at 12, 11. Um, we have uh, implemented a um, adventure program we're going to be running this summer up at Davidge. It'll be a four-week program. Uh, two weeks will be for seven to nine-year-olds, and two weeks will be for 10 to 12-year-olds. Again, we're coming up with a bunch of little programs to try to make up for not having that traditional sports camp. So the public, our brochures will be out hopefully by May 1st, but please call the recreation office with any questions. And lastly, uh, this Friday is the last day for spring soccer sign up. So folks need to get in there, otherwise they'll be paying a late fee. It does start on May 6th, and we, we're already up over 100 and some kids in that program. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. Corporation Council. Good evening. We're moving quickly toward a closing on the federal courthouse. The uh, seller's attorney is just working out some financial issues with the, with their bank. We we're originally going to do it, we hoped, on Thursday, but it looks like it'll be next week at this point. And our treasurer is all set to give me the check to pay the, the, the money for the deed, so that should be coming within the week. Uh, we're also going to close, projected to close this Friday on 84 Dorothea Dix Drive, which will become a dormitory for Faitian College. That's exciting. And you do have uh, two resolutions that will be offered from the floor with respect to 23 Center Street and 29 North Street, uh, which um, will, um, uh, this is to waive the moratorium based on two projects that were purchased from the city. And they have certain development goals. This will help them go along and will bring a couple of new businesses into the city. So again, very positive developments there. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Corporation Council. Thank you, Corporation Council. City Clerk. I have nothing this evening. Any questions for John? Mayor? Not to beat a dead horse, but the um, it was mentioned uh, what else we could do to, uh, to mitigate some of the issues with Miamisburg. And one thing that um, someone in the audience mentioned was the State DEC uh, did their inspection on March 31st. The letter to us is dated April 18th. So that's a pretty long gap, almost three weeks before the city is notified that there were violations um, um, at the site that, we sh uh, that they noticed um, that come under their compliance. So um, hopefully we'll put in a, uh, a call to the DEC tomorrow and ask for uh, an immediate notification of violations um, because the report um, you know it's, it's a checklist I don't know if you if you've seen it you might not have seen it yet basically they do a they go through a checklist of violations and at least it would give us although maybe not a complete report it'll make us aware 
of, um, of some problems there. So we'll, we'll try to clean that communications problem up with them and see if we're allowed to um, have access to those violations prior to, um, uh, without waiting for almost three weeks to get a report from them. Um, last week, uh, this past Saturday, in the Times Hill Record, if you missed it, there was an article on in the business section uh, regarding local IDAs prolific and attracting projects and jobs. As you know, we have a very active IDA in the city of Middletown. And uh, I'll just read you the section uh, regarding uh, uh, RID, RIDA. And it reads, of the 52 municipal IDAs that turned in data, Middletown was among the best value creators in using tax breaks and other financial perks to create projects and jobs. The city's IDA offered the equivalent of $155 in tax breaks and benefits per job, which placed it 17th out of 52. Yet it tallied the 10th highest net total for tax exemptions of 7.89 million. That means Middletown ISDA spread its perks across a broad range of projects. So that's positive news that the IDA is functioning in a very positive manner for us. As you know, some of the projects we've done were Toro College, and uh, we've had some uh, very positive results from the IDA. On another note, um, I met this evening with our Energy Resource Corporation, MNR Energy. Um, they're going to be presenting to you at the next Common Council meeting regarding the um, proposal to extend the contract. Uh, we've been doing two-year contracts with them. This is to provide, uh, to buy or purchase the uh, uh, in, in lieu of Orange and Rockland uh, energy directly from the supplier. Um, the projected annual savings this year by going with the private supplier versus Orange and Rockland was nearly $38,000. And um, Melissa will be making a presentation to you. I will have this scanned in and um, emailed to you prior to. It's going to be it's complicated to read, but it's uh, uh, much easier to follow when she explains it. So. I'm not going to attempt to uh, explain to you the, uh, the process, but there is a, an attachment that goes along with it that will um, address some of the potential pitfalls in the future with utility bills, and that is the, uh, uh, the renewable energy standard and the, um, the clean energy standards and the possibility that half of that potential savings may be lost as part of that um, surcharge to close the three upstate power plants. The nuclear power plants so uh, that's something we need to be aware of but uh, uh, Melissa will be here to explain it in person to you at that time uh, in regards to the BB gun incident of course it's unfortunate and of course it happens in many communities and we're uh, we don't condone it at all and we really uh, um, I think it overshadows all the a lot of the positive things that are being done in this community our high school Music program just was recognized once again, I think, as one of the best music programs in the, uh, in the country. Um, the Middletown Youth Council, the fine work that they're doing, all the recreation programs. So we will be uh, vigilant in trying to uh, um, address these issues with the youth in our community, um, as we do with the youth in any community. The opioid epidemic, epidemic that's happening has really uh, um, turned the world upside down from uh, from New Hampshire to California and, and throughout the world. So we, um, uh, sometimes good kids do stupid things and, and I don't know if these were good kids or bad kids or if they were kids at all. You know, 18 year old is not a kid. Um, so, but uh, believe me, if we, um, we, we will enforce the law. And I think that's part of the, what, when we had a presentation by the district attorney's office earlier at one of the committee meetings about the interventions that they're doing and, um, and maybe we can bring that to their attention. Paul, you're our representative at the board. Um, you meet quarterly. Is, um, is some issues with youth or young people, what uh, stupid things that they're doing. And this appears to be a very stupid thing. But the uh, one issue I wanted to talk to you about tonight also was um, a proposal that I put forth a couple years ago, and that was a sidewalk improvement program. And I, I think I'm ready to move forward with it and request funding from you for up to $50,000 grants to homeowners uh, to match and do some sidewalk replacement. You noticed last week the Kingston and some communities are experiencing theft of the bluestone um, that's on some of the streets and uh, thus creating a hazard. Our problem is more uh, 
not so much to bluestone we have very limited areas of bluestone but we had talked about a couple years ago was creating this program to offer uh, assistance to homeowners who were being violated for by their insurance companies for sidewalk uh, problems um, most if not all of the sidewalks in the city are the responsible of the homeowner and we started working on a program so if you could put it in committee that we can work together um, with uh, public works if you so choose um, mr. Uh, mr. Jude and to develop this concept um, my goal would be to start with fifty thousand dollars to do fifty homes and um, if we have more of a response then we can evaluate it at that time the homeowner would be doing their own repair uh, and um, therefore you know we would just be uh, subsidizing the uh, uh, the grant um, one idea is to do it through community development and um, which we can discuss and we can discuss different funding options but I think the time is um, when as you go around the city and walk around the city um, you can clearly see that uh, the sidewalks are in certain areas and uh, major disrepair and we should incentivize the homeowner um, and also homeowners are being violated by their insurance companies to do the repairs so I think it would be a good program and fifty thousand dollars would be a good start for that program on this Thursday I'll be meeting with the uh, Hudson Valley uh, Food Bank um, uh, Carrie Jones Ross she's the food sourcing coordinator and grants manager um, as you know they, they provide food to the soup kitchens and and food pantries in the Hudson Valley but they also have a program that's not run in the commercial areas but it might target a neighborhood uh, and the one neighborhood we're, we're going to look at is by Jerome Neal Park where we could uh, they would come in and provide fresh produce for free in that neighborhood um, they're doing it I believe in Kingston now um, she's going to uh, brief me on the program on Thursday uh, we'll take her on a tour and uh, target you know it's not a program that's um, in competition with because uh, one of the questions that was asked was does this compete with supermarkets you know would it compete with associate or, or, or uh, you know give out free food one person said to me well if, if your wife gave out uh, if somebody was at your outside your wife's restaurant giving out free spaghetti and meatballs why would they go inside and pay for spaghetti and meatballs it's a good point and a legitimate point but these are programs that are targeted at people who would not take advantage of or don't have the opportunity to have fresh produce in their not only their life but for their children so it sounds like an interesting program um, I'll be meeting with them on Thursday taking them on tour and uh, we'll follow up with you um, in the very near future they're very excited about the opportunity of expanding it into Middletown and it is successful in other communities including Kingston um, you, Sue mentioned and uh, others have mentioned the cleanup campaign this Saturday I would hope and encourage everyone who can to participate um, we've been uh, doing some very uh, um, extensive touring of the city myself and council president um, along with mr. Massey who seems to have free time and we've been um, noting some of the um, deficiencies in how people are uh, maybe it's just the uh, the spring uh, uh, coming around in the winter you know uh, the snow the big snowfall late but there are problems um, in certain neighborhoods with people cleaning up property and um, we especially looked at a section of Beacon Street today which was very disappointing and I spoke with Alderman Witt and I mentioned to Alderman Kleiner today we're going to be paying special attention uh, to that so uh, we are also Alderman Kleiner asked me about the um, the opportunity to um, um, tie in tenants bad tenants with uh, delinquent prop our properties that are in violation and that's certainly something we do have in our code our uh, assistant corporation counsel Alex Smith has assured me that he has brought tenants in uh, into court and we are going to pay special attention to doing that what I saw on some houses on Beacon today were not landlord problems they were tenant problems so we will be pursuing that and uh, we're hopefully going to start right on Beacon Street within the next couple days so but we will be going to all neighborhoods to, ad to address this issue and, and uh, to follow up on Sue's hard work and to make sure that her hard work does not go um, without any follow-up by the by the city um, the NICOM 
NICOM has been uh, focusing on some pretty interesting angles that r fall right up um, our alley, which, you know, the zombie property issue. And we'll be attending the New York Conference of Mayors um, conference up in Saratoga from uh, on May 7th. And uh, one is to, uh, to allow municipalities, one of the issues we're really pushing is to allow municipalities to take title to abandoned commercial property and streamline the notice process for the proceedings, meaning that these properties can't sit in limbo uh, with, you know, the zombie law applies to commercial property, I mean to residential properties. We can move much quicker on a residential property than we can on a commercial property, apparently based on what they're saying. And uh, NICOM is really making a big push. So we'll be in Albany lobbying for that. And also the permit against fire insurance proceeds. It's just the reverse there where we're not allowed. We do lean them immediately. We notify the New York State Insurance Department if there's a fire. Uh, but on one and two family homes, it's much harder for us to um, have a permanent lien on those proceeds. We've had success. Rich Girton has had a lot of success in that area. But uh, those are two issues that the Conference of Mayors is paying special attention to uh, during, this, um, during this next meeting. And the, um, the other area is, um, that I wanted to brief you on was uh, a budget survey and the budget survey results from, uh, from NICOM. It's, I don't know if, is all members of the council getting the, the magazine? You are. So I, I won't bore you with the results, but the, basically the issue of tax exempt properties of course is uh, always significant, but we're actually a little bit below the, um, the average now um, in some of the cities. But, the, um, but this is an interesting, uh, in regards to fund balance, is a, um, about 65% of the cities surveyed said they are either very concerned or somewhat concerned that their municipalities are drawing upon fund balance to pay for re reoccurring operating uh, costs. And a total of 45% of villages also reported the same thing. So this ties back into the tax cap, which I support, but um, it will also be something that's meaningful at the Conference of Mayors with the, um, the lobbying to do a few things. One is to reduce some of the mandates that are not funded and uh, so that we can operate within the 2% property tax cap. Two is to make it a true 2% property tax cap uh, so that you don't have to hit fund balance and three is to what we need to do is to focus on development of our water resources because we are using water and sewer sales to supplement our property taxes so I think we're in good shape when you look at the other 61 cities throughout New York State but there are warnings that um, in this uh, that you need to be well aware of that and I, and I think we've been doing a good job with our budget and we're uh, at least cognizant of the fact that on occasion we have used one-shot revenues to balance the budget. But it's something to keep in mind as you get job requests or uh, expenditure uh, requests from, uh, from the department heads. So any questions, I'd be more than happy to address them at this point. Any questions for the mayor? Mayor, I just want to say the downtown garbage issue, code enforcement is handling it. Awesome job. I yes. I, I don't like to give you a lot of credit all the time. I understand uh, that. And it's it quite working. obvious that you don't. And, and uh, code enforcement is doing their thing. Well, we, um, we have a lot more to go. And we're, we're really in a holding pattern until we make a decision on privatization, on which direction. Privatization will be a seven-day-a-week pickup under the, uh, I, I believe, right, Alderman Massey, under the proposals that have been accepted. That's correct. And... Uh, so uh, we're, before we do really hard enforcement on um, both that and recycling, we're waiting for a decision. And we hope to, you know, we need to make a decision soon. And we're, uh, we're, gonna be, we're going, to, going to begin backgrounds on both responding companies uh, very shortly. We appropriated $25,000 at the Board of Estimate to do those, and we will be retaining a company in the very near future. Thank you. Thank you. Courts of Alderman, Alderman Massey. <clears throat> I was actually thinking of leaving a little earlier, but then I looked around the room and I found out and I realized that I wasn't the smartest person in the world, certainly not the smartest person in this room. I wish that gentleman would have stayed a little longer because I'd like to tell him a couple of things. One, if he waits till November 9th to vote, he's going to be a couple days late and he's going to miss all the fun. Number two, 
I fought for many years to get those cameras and to have these, tele these meetings televised. I had some opposition, but I'm glad that uh, the members that are on this council, some of them were on at the time when we finally uh, implemented it. I think it's very important. I still support it. I knew that there were some drawbacks. And that we certainly encourage anyone that wants to speak to speak. However, we would like them to speak about issues dealing with the city. It's for the people from Miamisburg, and, and, and I feel your pain, but that's what we want. When you spoke about what happened on Willow Place, it's how we can help out Middletown. It's not to be used for political purposes. It's not to be used to come up and spew some truths, many untruths. Please do remember, just because you're at the microphone, what you say may or may not be accurate. You have to assess the person that's speaking. And I, I really hope that we don't ever get to the point where we consider stopping it because it is valuable, but please, people, respect the process. Move on to just two other things. Uh, one, the uh, cleanup this week, Saturday, 9 to 12. I hope everyone will uh, be able to attend. And then on Sunday, the Little League Parade. One final thing, and it is a, on a positive note, I think if you look over at the, on the second page, I'm proposing a resolution tonight to dedicate Orchard Street in the city of Middletown to be also known as Ben Gilman Way. Uh, I don't know how many people are old enough to remember Ben. Ben was a good friend, but he was a, a very good friend to the city of Middletown, served in Congress for years and years, and always believed Middletown was his hometown. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, not too long ago, and we've contacted the family, and sometime during the good weather, we will actually do the dedication, but I'm, I'm hoping everyone will uh, support this. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was great to see, may I? You're on. It was great to see all the youth here tonight, especially, uh, Chris, all the programs you bring, the boxing program, which we had a little, you know, they, get them to go. We had a couple of bends that the people didn't want it, but great program, great success with that program. And I would also like to thank you and your staff for their Easter egg hunt that was very well attended for all the volunteers. And Vanessa, welcome aboard to our great team. Thank you. All the records home. Good evening. I, uh, I wasn't going to talk very much tonight. I'm a, I'm a little sick. But uh, Ms. Magnamy came tonight, and she got me a little fired up about something that's pretty near and dear to my heart. Um, I think even before I came to the council, uh, I think our quality of life in the neighborhoods was a big deal to me. I think. President Rodriguez could uh, attest to the fact that we were a squeaky wheel down in our neighborhood and often called him with issues from our neighbors and ourselves to try to bring our, our little neighborhood together. Um, that being said, I, I really believe that it all comes down to ownership here in Middletown and really owning where you live and owning your portion of this community. And that actually ties in to our pride cleanup this weekend. And I think those two things go very well together. Um, pride in your city goes to the way it looks and also to our quality of life with our neighbors. And I think it's a big deal. I think we should all try to lend a hand, not only on Saturday, but every day, you know, windy night, trash blows on your lawn. I pick it up. I picked up four pieces of trash off my lawn this morning. Was it mine? No. But it's important to me that my street is nice and where my raise my family is nice. <laughs> And the same thing applies to beyond Saturday's event, which I think is what Sue is really striving for with these events, that the awareness spreads beyond this, this yearly event. And it also extends into Neighborhood Watch. We have over 70 miles of city streets for our police to patrol. And they really do need our help. You know, we have to own our part in the city. And then again, it's not just about looking out for your little patch of grass, your piece of property. If you see something on your neighbor's property that isn't right, if you see something that makes you concerned, you can call. 
No problem is too small. I have never encountered a situation where our police do not want to hear from you and are not willing to come out and investigate. And they will come, and you don't have to give your name, but reporting is a big deal, and it is a huge assistance to our police department, and I believe that they would, I think Sergeant Tobin would agree with that this evening, and it's, it all ties together. So I just hope that your statements tonight and what we have to say tonight in response will really inspire some people to really step up, meet your neighbor, look around you, and take some ownership in this city. It's a beautiful and wonderful place to live if you look outside your bubble and do it. So I hope I will see everyone on Saturday morning and we have good weather. I'll leave it at that. Good night. Alderman Johnson. I just want to thank the mayor whenever he tries not to beat a dead horse. I appreciate that. Um, with respect to our representatives, from the Youth <laughs> Council. <clears throat> um, professional, enthusiastic, and articulate. Good combination, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, and thank your colleague as well who's not here this evening. Um, I did read the report on the IDA, and I was, we had a lot of jewels in our crown that were highlighted this evening um, between all the youth activities, um, the IDA exemplary, DRI exemplary, a lot of things we're doing are being uh, described as exemplary, so I do appreciate that. I congratulate all. With respect to your comments on NICOM, I have articulated in the past, I think, the zombie thing is one of the biggest things that all of us are aware of on a daily basis because we walk by these properties and we see them, and anything we can do to ameliorate that uh, is a great thing for me. Uh, we did meet as the Economic Planning Committee early this evening. I continue uh, on behalf of the committee to plot along. I want to thank Mr. Gerton for his cordial and patient expertise, and we'll have these two add-ons for tonight for these two projects. Uh, with respect to the Willow Place uh, comment, um, yeah, crime is certainly something that will uh, cause all of us to have anxiety uh, whenever it's witnessed. I think the, um, I've been in town uh, quite a while. I think the um, neighborhood watch has waxed and waned over the years. Um, the saying is still true, it's the eyes and ears. And uh, everybody's got a cell phone, everybody can take a video, everybody can take a picture of a license plate, and we're all the eyes and ears of, of what we have, and that's to protect our quality of life. I think it's not a coincidence that earlier this evening with Mr. Witt's committee, we met with Darlene from the DA's office, and she talked about the community camera partnership. For those who weren't aware of it, the uh, DA's office has launched this uh, initiative where if you have a security camera, either public or private, I mean residential or commercial, you can register that camera with the DA's office, not that they would come in and look at what you're looking at, but if there was a crime and they knew there were four cameras on Willow Place, they could call, if you called it, in, if, if it got called into the police and there were residential cameras, and once again, this is time sensitive, if one of those cameras and when somebody's home picked up a license plate, it would make life a lot simpler. Um, the information is on the uh, website at ocdacams.com, orangecountydasoffice.com. And um, I hope more people, or all the eyes and ears, whether it's your cell phone or a security camera or seeing something at your neighbor's house, we're all in it together. And lastly, I want to wish a belated happy birthday to my good friend, Alderman Massey. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Witt. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you see tonight and, and what's going on between the kids who were here and, and the opportunity on Saturday for the cleanup and all the different kids and groups who are going to be involved and even the Little League Parade, you know, when we give our kids a chance to be rock stars, they're rock stars. And um, it's, it's nice to see. It really is. And there's a lot of stuff going on as we, as we um, have the last three months of school. But this is, this is really a great opportunity and exciting. And congratulations, Sue, on your work to to keep this party going and it should be a big weekend for us. Um, I will echo what everyone else is saying about um, if you see something, say something. In my time, 343-3151, uh, three, three, that's the City of Middletown Police Department. Um, they're not turning you away. They want to hear what you have to say and, 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 you know, like the commissioner was saying and the mayor was saying is, you know, reach out to, reach out to the police when it's happening and, and that is such a big difference in in helping solve problems. Um, that's one of the first thing that was, you know, drilled into me, you know, when I first started doing this. So I thank them for that. And um, thank you very much. Alderman Kleiner. Um, 
Thank you. <clears throat> the 3151 is a good number to remember. Uh, it's easy for me because when I wanted to talk to my dad, that was the number of the state hospital was 3433151. So the police took it over. It's certainly, I remember, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I remembered it for about 70 years now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, ben Gilman Way, um, just to add to that, uh, Ben had an office on Orchard Street for many, many years, so it's uh, very appropriate that it be Orchard Street. Um, I want to congratulate Chris Brinkerhoff and, and her staff uh, for the success of the boxing program. I know there was uh, a lot of work put in, uh, a little skepticism on some parts, uh, some people's part, and uh, uh, Chris was determined and, and uh, it's come a long way and congratulations because that's really great. Um, I want to thank the people who came out to our constitu second ward constituents meeting uh, and then the next night the people who came out to citywide watch. Um, we do have people who uh, come and, and they have a lot to add, uh, a lot to discuss. They have some questions, but lots of suggestions too. And it's, and it's a good dialogue. We want to keep it up. Um, the next citywide watch will be on May 9th, and, but we will also do one on June 13th, and that's the one where the mayor will be there. We'll see if we can maybe get the police chief to come. But um, I, I know a lot of people expressed an interest in having the mayor come, and so it's, it's always very much appreciated. Uh, the Little League Parade uh, emphasizes again that it gathers at 1030 at the Elks Club, so it steps off at 11 o'clock, but if you want to be part of the parade, you want to get there earlier. And I noticed, because I called to double check the time, because it's usually 1130, uh, I also noticed because that's the rain date for our Pride cleanup, so um, we're just going to ignore that, and we're going to be out on Saturday almost no matter what. And uh, I want to tell people that if you are bringing a group to the cleanup, we want to try and take pictures of each group this year. So keep that in mind. Try and get your group together for a picture uh, before you head out. And um, finally, uh, Barbara Bedell, what would we do without her? We love you. Thank you very much. Alderman John Francois. Uh, good evening. Uh, Sue, I got to applaud you to our Pride Cleanup Project. It's becoming one of the main events in the city around this time. And when people hear the word getting involved, they're just assuming it's a daily task, but it doesn't have to be. If you have to pay one day out of the year to get involved in something, the prior cleanup day on this Saturday, April 22nd, is the day to do it. It doesn't have to be an everyday task. Just one day out of the year, April 22nd, this Saturday. And also, the Dable family, and it, this heartbreaking, when I came in this evening, I saw the report from DEC, and you guys been going at this for a while. I thought we actually was getting ground try to get this fixed for you guys but unfortunately that's not the case but i know the commissioner and i and and and, and the mayor we're keeping the pressure on so eventually this is going to be a good outcome but so you have to go through this right now just bear with us we're on top of it and the commissioner uh the residents in uh, dogwood drive want to thank you for getting origin rockland to fix the light I mean, they're so happy right now. They're requesting for you to run for president in 2020. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> All the women said. Hello. Good evening. Um, I just want to thank you guys, everyone, again. You guys have no idea how happy I am. Like, I'm honored. I really am. Um, first off, I want to start off with talking about the youth. Like, wow. It's amazing to see that there's actually more involvement. And I'm witnessing it from here because it makes me really proud because it's like I remember when I was doing it and it wasn't that big, but now it's a lot of involvement, which is really good, because it's, I feel like as a youth, it's our America too, so it's our middle town too, and it's, it's prospering baby steps, but we're doing really good. Um, Saturday, it was actually the event at Davich. I went, and I had so much fun. 
I felt like a child just running. Um, I also wanted to mention, like, I apologize for um, the residents on Anthony Street. I just got it here, and I want to give you credit because you're you're really holding it down. That's awesome, and I admire you for that. So I'm willing to work with you and everyone else. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Other than that, um, this is awesome. Like, I, honestly, I'm still really honored and. Um, inspired to keep working together. Thank you. Thank you. New business. We have resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to authorize the treasurer to accept an award of $1,750 to participate in the statewide child passenger safety program for the Middletown Police Department for 2017. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. The resolution passes. The resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to authorize the renewal of a contract for the DPW Pitney Bowes mailing machine for 16 months. The resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. The resolution passes. The resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon to authorize the treasurer to accept a total of $250 in donations for the City of Middletown Pride Cleanup Project. Responsible by Alderman Kassoum, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoum? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the treasurer to accept a donation for the amount of $30.35 for the Recreation <coughs> and Parks Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, <coughs> second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to transfer from the sewer fund balance $55,510 for an emergency repair to the wastewater treatment plant for emptying and cleaning the two primary sludge digesters. Osman Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to approve and retain Compompupil consultants for the audit of the city's gross receipts tax collections. Responsible by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to transfer from the sewer fund balance $90,000 for an emergency repair for the solid treatments at the wastewater treatment plant. Responsible Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kassoum. Mayor? Apparently the two resolutions have been switched around. The um, $55,510 is for the screw pump and the $90,000 is for the uh, primary sludge um, digesters. Right now, we just got to amend it to $55,510, right? So the, the resolution on the floor, you have to change to for the um, primary sludge digesters to amend that, and then we'll have to go back and to the um, whoever sponsored the 55510 resolution, and the second would have to um, bring it back up on the floor and then amend that to... Um, Motion to amend the current resolution to the reflect the 55,510. Second. Motion by Alderman Rick second by Alderman Johnson. Yeah. Do all in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 And you have to vote on the vote, amended. Vote as amended. Oh, amended. Vote as amended. Kleiner, I think. Didn't Kleiner do the? I think I did. Alderman it was Witt and Kleiner. Witt and Kleiner, Kleiner okay. By Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Kleiner, to amend the uh, resolution. All in favor? Aye. 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 The resolutions are correct. It's just the agenda that's. Uh... Oh, okay. Then you don't have to do anything. So the agenda is <laughs> the. 
It was if the, if the agenda is the, the resolution is the important one. I'm just going by the, the by the what the agenda reads. The resolution. All right, so we'll take it all back. Motion to rescind. The motion. <laughs> <laughs> motion to rescind the mayor. No, On the right, right way, they're sir. fine. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we're at the ninety thousand, and that's for the digester, correct? <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. Yes, 90,000 90, is for the digesters, yes, right? Yes, for cleaning the digesters. Yeah, the, the resolution is correct. So Alderman John Francois, John Francois. Second by Alderman Bram Kassoon. Roll. Bram Kassoon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. John Francois. Aye. Sid. Aye. Witt. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Burr. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. That was John's first mistake in like eight years, so. Seriously. And that was not a big one. All right. I'm not going to live this one down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, Where's brewery, Chuck? the brewery's still open. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's Chuck? Chuck is in Goshen. <laughs> okay. Resolution sponsored by all the women said is the first resolution. All right. To authorize the treasurer to transfer a total of $1,650 from the sewer fund balance for the capital project for the Sterling Street sewer project. Resolution sponsored by all the women said, seconded by all the women John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to authorize the treasurer to transfer a total of $2,381.34 to cover expenses for the meal allowance and the welfare fund that was under budgeted. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Bram Kassoon. Any discussion? Oh. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to authorize the mayor as signer for all documents for submission of a Danzy grant for the Paramount Theater. Resolution by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon. Resolution for seeker designation as lead agency for drainage improvements to West Main Street and Maple, and Maple Avenue. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon. Johnson. Any discussion? Oh. Ram Kassoon? Yes, a thousand times yes. <laughs> Johnson? Same, yes. Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the treasurer to refund $10,497.95 to Alta East for overpaid water and sewer charges. Sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by <coughs> Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Pro. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey and second by Alderman Burr to hereby dedicate Orchard Street in the city of Middletown to be also known as Ben Gilman Way. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to approve the bids for the Department of Public Works. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to schedule a public hearing on Tuesday, May 4th, 2017 to amend the zoning code to change 17 properties zoning from C1 to I1A. Responsible by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the treasurer to transfer a total of $78,702 to cover the cost of three vehicles for the Department of Public Works. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Yep. Alderman Kleiner? 
Uh, I just wanted to mention that even though this is a transfer, this will eventually be going as a capital expense, so it, it will be under a ban. The transfer will be replenished. Right. Alderman or Clyer, I mean, <laughs> I just wanted to make a mention I'll be abstaining from this um, resolution. I do not disagree with it. I do believe they're necessary. However, given that my husband being a code enforcement officer might be a recipient of one of these vehicles, I respectfully abstain. Anyone else? Roll. Bram Kazoon? Abstain. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Liner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That is all for new business. Mr. President, on behalf of my committee, I'd like to offer the following resolution. I resolve that the Common Council approves the application of Comedia Group, Inc. to establish a high-tech office on the first and second floors and two apartment units on the third floor of the building located on the property known as 23 Center Street, Middletown, New York. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Rekosum. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Alderman Johnson. On behalf of my committee, I'd like to offer the following resolution resolved that the Common Council <coughs> approves the application of 29 North Street, North Corp to establish an antique and art center, including antiques, restoration and auctions, appraisal services, and similar uses in the building located on the property known as 2935 North Street, Middletown, New York. Alderman Johnson, do I have a second? Alderman Massey, any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be ordered that the claims be adjusted and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Bram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution. Adjournment?